This story, oh God, it has people in their feelings right now, really in their feelings. So if you have not heard yet, Nomiki Kuntz, who's a contributor of the Majority Report, has announced that she is running for office for New York State Senate. There are some problems. First, I'm going to show you the announcement, and then I'm going to go through a couple of reasons why this is an issue. I'm going to show you some responses from, actually one response from Emma when she finds out about the issue about Nomiki running. I'm going to show you some receipts about Nomiki when she ran for office before. Nomiki is not your friend, basically. Long story short, she is not your friend. I don't trust this race, her running in it. I feel like this is more of a vanity project for Nomiki, and I'm going to get into that in just a second. But first, I do want to start with this video where she decided to make the announcement on Majority Report. So that is where this begins. So here we go. It's been a day. But Nomi, um, my understanding is you have an announcement to make. I do. I would do this no other place but with our Majority Report family who is so dedicated to not just uh, national issues, but issues in local communities across this country. And I want to announce here that um, I am running for State Senate of New York uh, in the District 59. It's a brand new district that encompasses the community I live in. And you may have heard about the redistricting issues that happened recently. Well, uh, we found out about this district a little over a week ago, and I was approached by many people in the community who I've organized with and gone through many challenges and fights uh, against big interests like real estate and the MTA together and Amazon. Uh, and I am announcing today that I am running for New York State Senate in 59 so that we can keep the New York State Senate that we fought so hard to make progressive, progressive, because we are at risk of losing one of the only legislatures in this country that is Democratic led and possibly the only truly progressive legislature. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Very <laughs> I want you to pay attention to some of the things that she said. I'm going to chime in here just a second. But no, right, here um, we go. my understanding is you have an announcement to make. I do. I would do this no other place but with our Majority Report family who is so dedicated to not just uh, national issues, but issues in local communities across this country. And I want to announce here that um, I am running for state senate of new york uh in the district 59 it's a brand new district that encompasses the community i live in and you may have you notice she said it's a brand new district so i did tell you guys this a couple of nights ago how they've been redrawing the districts in new york city that's one of the ones that has been redrawn so they have a brand new district that she's deciding to run in listen to the rest Heard about the redistricting issues that happened recently. Well, uh, we found out about this district a little over a week ago. We found out about this district a little over a week ago. Just a little over a week ago, she found out about it. That's how quick this decision came for her to run. And I was approached by many people in the community who I've organized with and gone through many challenges and fights. Uh, against big interests like real estate and the MTA together and Amazon. Uh, and I am announcing today that I am running for New York State Senate in 59 so that we can keep the New York State Senate that we fought so hard to make progressive. Look at the look on Sam. Look at their faces. Look at the look on Sam's face. Sam is like, like, why do they not look excited? Why do they not look happy for Nate? Like, she's happy. She's excited. They don't seem to be excited. Progressive, because we are at risk of losing one of the only legislatures in this country that is Democratic led and possibly the only truly progressive legislature. <laughs> there it is. Very exciting. <laughs> so different now. <laughs> this is very exciting. And um, I, I, I mean, I want to talk about this is very exciting. You see how he said, like, this is very exciting. 
Do they sound excited? She sounds excited. They don't. Eric said she was approached by several people with money. Right? Right? About the district, but I think people have to understand just how, you know, there's, uh, there are states around the country where you have, uh, you know, you want to keep the Republicans from getting a trifecta so that they can't, um, you know, pr promulgate these laws. But in and, and California is uh, locked up, but New York should be so much more progressive than it has been over the course of just the five or 10 years, you know, past five or 10 years. And the what happens in New York does not stay in New York. And I think that is why um, there has been so much money poured into New York, despite the fact how how progressive the population is poured into New York because they don't want the 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 state to reflect that prog uh, progressivity in terms of their laws because they know that what's that what happens in new york is going to both impact what happens in other states but also so many businesses are here that you change their business practices in new york state you're changing their business practices period and that's why the state senate is so important I, you, I couldn't have said it better. Um, you know, I think the whole country is feeling this firsthand right now, whether it's uh, attacks on women's right to choose at the local level or labor union attacks or attacks against LGBT community across the country. Uh, trans rights uh, be, are being attacked right in their faces. Not to mention we have immigrants rights. I mean, every single corner of this country, including New York State, is being attacked by the right wing. The IDC, those eight Democrats who were caucusing with Republicans, were funded by conservatives. There are still people. One thing I noticed about Nomiki is she always brings up how the problem seems to be the conservatives. She doesn't want to talk about the problems that you have with corporate Democrats. That's something I've noticed about her. Even when she, especially actually when she goes on the Fox News, she doesn't want to admit the problems that we have with corporate Democrats. Some of these issues that she brought up in reference to housing, in reference to labor, those aren't Republican or Democrat issues. That's a money issue. That's a capitalism issue. Those are class issues. And this goes back to what I've said before. If you're rich and you're gonna buy housing, for example. You wanna buy up a couple of buildings even though people live there, tenants live there. You wanna buy those buildings, flip them, and turn them into expensive condos. As a rich person, you can probably do that in a lot of these districts in New York City. People have done it here in Boston. Does it matter if you're on the left or the right and you're doing that? No. You think it's only people on the right who are causing gentrification? Most of the gentrification that's happened here in Boston has been by people on the left, boo. What? You want to talk about the labor issues? I got news for you. People on the right and people on the left who are CEOs exploit laborers. People on the right and people on the left who are CEOs exploit their workers. This is a capitalism problem. in the state Senate who take that money. So even though the Democrats are in the majority, we need to make sure it's a progressive majority. And I'm proud to say that my district is the most progressive district in the state, but it's got its issues too. In this district, we have a lot. I just want to chime in here because she says we want to make sure it's a progressive majority in the Senate. Why is that problematic for her to say that? I'm going to tell you in just a second. I'm going to show you in just a second because if she was really so concerned about a progressive majority, she would not be running in this race. And I'm going to show you why in just a second. Long Island City, which is the fastest growing city in America. It is full of empty towers. These are apartments that are not even close to capacity. Major real estate deals. It's where Amazon was going to, uh, we fought off Amazon in Long Island City, but it was also a real estate deal uh, the Amazon facility. Just a couple hundred feet away is the lar largest housing project in the country. So you literally have within feet of each other, the, the classic tale of two cities, which is almost a cliche at this point. But the difference about this time around is that 
you know, we need to make sure that we attack that backlog of issues that were postponed and ignored uh, over the last 10, 15, 20 years as centrists and Republicans have really owned the state Senate and the legislature and frankly, the governorship. Uh, so we have an opportunity to deal with things like the fact that NYCHA is not fully funded, the fact that NYCHA is- I just want to chime in here because there's something she mentioned about the tale of two cities when she says you have the largest housing project and then you have a different side. The word is called gentrification. And Long Island City is one of those, those districts that has been gentrified. I know I used to live in New York. It's happening all over. Queens, Brooklyn, Brooklyn has gotten really bad now in reference to gentrification. It's happening all over. It's been gentrified. That's why you're having a lot of the problems that she's discussing. And now she goes on to mention, well, we've had these Republicans in the Senate and that's why mm, gentrification happens under Democrat leadership and Republican leadership. They don't care. They just want the money. Leroy said it's so gentrified, had to get out of there. Right. It's bad. It's bad. I know, like I said, I used to live in New York. Long Island City, the district she's referring to, has been gentrified. That's not because of one political party. It's been happening under Democrats and it's happened under Republicans. They don't care. They just want the money. They want the investment still has lead paint and lead in its water. The fact that people who pay very expensive rent, frankly, and, you know, comparatively to the rest of the country in NYCHA, one out of eight New Yorkers live in NYCHA. They are not receiving their basic things that landlords need to, to put into um, housing. And that is a city and state issue. It's also a national issue. Uh, but that, that carries on over to just how this community has changed a lot. There aren't you know, there aren't subways uh, close by, to even my apartment. The bus routes once once every hour, maybe. Uh, you know, we know that climate change, we're right on the edge of, of, of the water here in my community in particular. A lot of this is waterfront communities. Because of gentrification, that's why the neighborhood has changed. It was effect during those floods, that, that, that crazy rainfall that uh, occurred, you know, a few months ago. That was Queens. Those are people living in basement apartments. Yeah. We, we don't have that infrastructure, we have the money. As someone said to me um, the other day, it was brilliant. They said, if we, were in the, if we were a country, we are one of the top 15 richest countries, this state, where's the money going? Well, I mean- That's what I wanna know. Part of it's the, the massive problem of these major real estate developers here. And you know, I think people often think of Brooklyn in terms of being the front lines of gentrification in, in the city. Um, but that's happened kind of largely already. And Long Island City is definitely, and Queens is the next frontier, I think the place to watch. So do you plan on, I mean, it sounds like it, but it's- It's not even the place to watch anymore. Queens has already been gentrified, not fully, but I went to visit a couple years ago when I saw the gentrification. And I used to live in New York. So, this is not, it's not a new thing that's coming to Queens. It's been happening. Let's get away from this because I do want to explain to you why this is a problem that she is running in that district, this new district that she just found out about a week ago it was a new district and decided to run. Actually, first... Let me show you her endorsement, maybe her endorsement per se, but her support. Then I'm going to tell you why it's a problem that she's choosing to run. If she cares about progressives or more progressives actually getting into the house in New York. So Mr. Rokana has come out in support of Nomiki's race. He said, I am backing Nomiki Kunst in her race for New York State Senate. Nomiki is a proven fighter and a powerful voice for progressive causes. This just sounds generic to me. Powerful voice for progressive causes. What causes? What are the causes, Ro? She's a proven fighter. What has she fought for? This is so generic, but he's giving his support to Nomiki. 
This is why I told you that some of these outlets like Majority Report, this is why they don't come out heavily against these progressive politicians in Congress because they want to still maintain access to them. They want to maintain their relationships with them. Obviously, Rokana knows Nomiki. Why is his support for Nomiki a problem? Why is Nomiki running in this race a problem? Well, I'm going to show you. Let's go ahead and get into this. <clears throat> you know, before Nomiki decided to run in this new district that she just found out about a week ago and decided to throw her hat in the ring, there was already a progressive candidate running in this district. A DSA candidate that had already been endorsed by AOC. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. I told you, I think this is a vanity project. Astoria Progressive launches campaign for state Senate seat angers many left-leaning Democrats. They kill me with this term, this left-leaning. Either you're left or you're not, boo. Podcaster and well-known Democratic socialist from Astoria has thrown the, prog the progressive wing of the Democratic Party into disarray by announcing she plans to run for the District 59 seat in the state Senate. Nomiki announced Tuesday on the Majority Report talk show that she plans to run for the newly formed District 59 seat that covers Astoria, Long Island City, Williamsburg, Greenpoint, and parts of Manhattan. I want to announce that I'm running for state Senate in District 59, a brand new district that encompasses the community that I live in. Oh, Nomiki, you are going to get a lot of flack for this one. The new district was created mid-May. Let's go down here. Kunz joins other candidates such as Elizabeth Crowley. By the way, Elizabeth Crowley is Joe Crowley's cousin. Joe Crowley was AOC's challenger. That's who she beat. That's not the problem, though. This is the problem. Kunz joins other candidates such as Elizabeth Crowley and Kristen Gonzalez in the race. However, her announcement has upset many progressives who believe she will cut into the vote for Gonzalez. Gonzalez, a progressive who lives in Long Island City, has already garnered the support of AOC, the NYC DSA, the Working Families Party. Of course, guys, I'm suspect about the Working Families Party. I've told you guys about them, that they sometimes will go against the progressive candidate and back the corporate Democrat candidate. That's actually been happening this year as well. She's been supported by Make the Road, New York Communities for Change, Assembly Member Zoran Mamdani, Council Member Tiffany Cobbin. Tiffany uh, Cobbin ran... 2020, I believe, for district attorney, she didn't win, and many other left-leaning officials and organizations. Gonzalez announced that she was running months ago when most thought Long Island City was going to be part of the Senate District 17, a district that was eliminated by the special master last month. That district would have included Long Island City, Woodside, Ridgewood, Masspeth, Glendale, and Greenpoint, although not Astoria. Kant said she decided to run after the boundaries of District 59 were drawn and included Astoria. So you can see the pictures here. This shows you the difference. If you look at the picture on the left, these were the previous boundaries. And if you look at the picture on the right, this is the newly drawn district. Again, she goes on to say, I found out about this new district a little over a week ago. 
Let me pop out here for just a second. Let me get this straight, ladies and gentlemen. No, Miki Khan said on Majority Report, they need to increase the amount of progressives in the Senate in New York City. If there was a progressive like Kristen Gonzalez already running in this race, why did Nomiki join this race and split the progressive vote? Because that's exactly what's going to happen. Why did she do that? You already had a progressive candidate that was backed by DSA and endorsed by AOC. And you decide to jump in last minute because now you see that this district is new and you think this might be your moment not thinking about the fact that you already had a progressive who's been backed and endorsed by multiple organizations and you decide to jump in because you decide to have a vanity project. That's what this is about. As much as I hear Nomiki talk about, we need to have more people of color. We need to have more women. Why do you jump in to go against the Latina progressive? Look at her jumping in and making this about her. Really? Now, some of these same networks have been criticizing white candidates that jump in and try to take support away from the, the, the candidates of color, right? So Martin Air Jones is going through that right now. Nomiki, in her own vanity, doesn't stop and think wait a minute, there's already a progressive in this district, in this race. She has these endorsements and she's a woman of color, which is what I say we need more of in politics. Maybe I ought to sit this one out. No, she can't do that because she has to make it about her. Now, I'm not telling you how to vote, who you should vote for. I think going into the Democratic Party is, is a waste of time in my opinion, if you really want to get things done. However, this is more on the local level, so it could be a little bit different for them. That being said, if you're going to vote and you want to vote for a progressive, now, instead of the progressive votes going to Kristen's, Kristen Gonzalez, now that vote is going to be split between Kristen and Nomiki. This is ridiculous. She had to make it about her. I'll go on and say here, if we go down here, all the way down here, there's Rokana giving his support. I already showed you that part. Listen to this. Rokana came under harsh criticism for the endorsement for many of his followers. Before you endorse, you probably should have talked to your colleague who lives in the district instead of 10 most annoying podcasters. That came from a follower. Another tweet. What the F? I'm trying to be better with the profanity, you guys. What the F? You are reaching across the country to make an endorsement in a state Senate race in support of the spoiler candidate who's jumping in against an already strong consensus progressive candidate. And that's exactly what Rokana did. Why? Because Nomiki is his friend. Do you guys see why there's a conflict of interest here? This is why you can't be friends with these politicians. This is what happens. So here is Rokana automatically giving his support for Nomiki because he's friends with her instead of giving his support for the progressive candidate that had already been endorsed by AOC, that had already received support from all these other organizations and announced months ago. It's all about a who you know. This is all like, it's theater. It's go and support my friend, not necessarily go and support the best person for the job. They're doing the same thing that happens in D.C. It's really messed up. So what is Kristen Gonzalez supposed to do now? 
This doesn't make any sense. I'll show you if we go further down in the article. And this was AOC's endorsement. If you're in NYC and live in Astoria, LIC, Greenpoint, Murray Hill, Kipps Bay, Stoytown, Gramercy, Gonzalez for New York is an incredible candidate for state Senate on housing, climate, health care, and more. Proud to support her. There's the endorsement. Here's Kristen Gonzalez sharing the endorsement. And here's the endorsement. Oh, I think I clicked on it twice. I was just trying to show the picture. Here's the endorsement right here. So what the fuck, Nomiki? What is wrong with you? Why would you do that? You mean to tell me so? Look, it's bad enough. The progressives already have to fight against Republican candidates and the corporate Democrat candidates. They already have a struggle to raise a lot of money because they're not taking corporate money. Now, the progressive candidate has to fight against another progressive candidate. Make that make sense. Oh, Steven said money. That's why it's that easy, Sabs. LOL. This is awful. But it doesn't end here. It goes on. <sighs> People are calling her out. People are calling her out. And she deserves it. So Aaron Mate tweeted this. Mm, awkward majority report a show that regularly attacks other leftists it accused of trying to split the left now has to grapple with one of its co-hosts running against DSA endorsed Gonzalez for New York in New York 59 and thus trying to split the left now I'm going to play the clip here for just a second but I want to comment on that Nomiki is one of the people, and I've played this clip on this show before, she's one of the people that said we were trying to divide the left. Those of us that may have been on the Jimmy Dore show, she said this herself. She called us these random accounts. She said we are the ones that are trying to split the left. Yet she is the one who is running against a progressive candidate that was already in the race. So who's really trying to split the left? This is stupid. It's really dumb. Now, apparently, Emma didn't seem to be aware of this. I don't know if I believe it or not. I find it hard to believe that a show that admittedly tells you to support progressive candidates going into the Democratic Party doesn't know there's already a progressive candidate running in a city that they all live in. The majority report takes place in New York City. There was a caller who called into the show and they had a question for Emma about this issue in particular. Listen to this. Uh, Emma's Cashews writes in, Hey, Emma Jordy crew, I like Nomi and think she'd be a great senator, but are you worried about the chance she splits the left vote with Kristen Gonzalez and uh, Crowley gets elected? Gonzalez already got endorsed by AOC, DSA, and the Working Families Party, so why should I support a candidate when the rest of the institutional left is backing another leftist poggers? Um, it's a great point. It's a great point. Um, look, Yesterday, I did not know that uh, Nomi was running in a district with uh, Kristen Gonzalez and this uh, who's backed by DSA, one of this historic, the uh, historically large number of DSA endorsed candidates in the upcoming elections here in New York. I wish I had known that, frankly, um, you know, Nomi, he's a friend of the show and she's going to. Uh, 
you know, it's her choice to run. Um, but I really don't have an answer for, uh, for how that. This is awkward. So <laughs> it could be possible that because the districts were redrawn, Emma didn't know that, but for Nomiki being a candidate, Nomiki should have known that. Nomiki should have known that. She should have already seen who the opponents were in the race. So that's a failure on Nomiki's part. And it's not the only time she's failed in a political... I'm going to bring this up in just a second. I'm going to show you something else she did when she ran for office before. But listen to this. This is embarrassing. Because I yeah, I mean, I, I got a lot of those messages, too. I didn't anticipate that conflict and perhaps I should have. I haven't looked closely at the candidates yet right. other than to know that they exist. And, and frankly, I, I was a little confused because the uh, districts had just been redrawn. So it was hard to keep track for me. Yeah. But but look, this is nothing personal to know me. Uh, it's that I support DSA candidates. Um, this is true if uh, DSA put in somebody against you know, my buddy Chris running in Dallas. He didn't run as a DSA candidate. Uh, I would have supported DSA over over him um, because of that ideological reason. And I think, like, look, I think there's certain folks who say, like, this is democracy uh, and, you know, win. Uh, and I kind of, uh, in a vacuum, can re relate to that and, like, see the best candidate win. But, you know, you do have that Crowley <laughs> um, vote split issue. And uh, you do have uh, the entire rest of the left lining up behind Kristen Gonzalez, uh, who I think looks like a really good candidate. And, uh, who I'm probably going to donate to. So, uh, yeah, it's a, <laughs> I, I, we've heard the criticisms, um, and Va uh, very valid, yeah. very valid, frankly. And I think that's like the challenge probably for Nomiki's campaign is how do you like, that's a huge concern. <laughs> Emma does not look comfortable here. Emma does not look comfortable in that image. Now, Majority Report has a conflict of interest because Nomiki is a contributor for Majority Report. That's why you don't see her on there every, every time they film, but she's usually on there probably like once a week or so. But she's a contributor for Majority Report. They're her friends. When she announced that she was running on that show, what did she call them? She said, my Majority Report fam. So they're like family to her. So if you're on the Majority Report, who are you going to tell your viewers to vote for, who to help, who to volunteer for? See, this is a conflict of interest because you have two progressive candidates running against each other. So you have Nomiki running against Kristen Gonzalez, who was already in the race and is the DSA candidate. So for people like Emma and Sam, are they going to tell their viewers vote for Kristen because she's backed by DSA and AOC and she was in the race first? and she looks like the best candidate? Or are they gonna tell them to vote for Nomiki because she's their friend? We already saw what Rokana's doing. Rokana is giving his support towards Nomiki because she's his friend. So this, this whole journey that Nomiki has decided to do, this has made things pretty awkward for people like Emma and Sam Cedar at Majority Report. Because what are they supposed to do? If they tell their audience to support Kristen, then Nomik is going to get upset. And some of their audience might get upset and say, that's not fair. How do you turn your back on one of your own? Right? If they tell their audience to support Nomiki, then they still may have audience members get upset because they may say, that's not fair. She's already friends with you guys. Kristen was in the race first. Either way, this is fucked. I'm sorry, but this was stupid. When you go to run for office, you need to know, you know who you're running against. You know. Do you know how many people I know that have run for office locally here? Even if it's something like for city councilor, people that run for the Senate, they knew. This was foolish. So you want to talk about dividing the left, which is something Nomiki has done multiple times on that show? Criticize people like me, criticize people like anybody that is not in that TYT lane saying that we're dividing the left. And I told you guys before, it's a class divide. Not a podcaster divide, it is a class divide.
But look who's out there actually physically doing the dividing. What? So now you're splitting the progressive vote. Neither one of them might win now. I'm going to go to some of the comments. I see I have a lot of them. And then I'm going to show you something else about Nomiki political history that is troubling. And it has to deal with financials. So there's more I need to show you about Nomiki. I don't think she will be a good politician. She's had cringe takes when it comes to foreign policy. She's uh, She was a Biden stan as well at one point. Let's look into it. I got this clip here. Now, this is from behind the headlines. I'm not going to show the whole thing, but I want you to watch this clip for a second about Nomiki Kuntz. Very progressive. Kunst also lashed out at journalist Max Blumenthal by falsely accusing him of going on a literal foreign interest funded trip to Syria. So who is Nomiki Kunst and why does she sound like an intern for the Project for a New American Century? According to her own bio, she not only helps coach Hollywood celebrity wannabes on public speaking, she has been an active participant in NATO's criminal destruction of Libya. That's right, self-described leftist Nomiki Khan spent time training the Islamist opposition in Libya after the NATO intervention that deposed Muammar Gaddafi and saw him murdered in the streets by jihadist proxies after drones attacked his motorcade. Khan's traveled to Libya thanks to the National Democratic Institute, one of the subsidiaries of the very same CIA cutout, the National Endowment for Democracy, that funds Bellingcat. The National Democratic Institute was directed at the time by Madeleine Albright, Oh, God, not another Madeline Albright stand. Just like Anna Kasparian. Touristic former Secretary of State, who famously stated that she was perfectly fine with being responsible for killing half a million Iraqi children. We have heard that a half a million children have died. I mean, that's more children than died when, when, in, in Hiroshima. Oh, I remember this. This is very cringe. And, and, you know, is the price worth it? I think this is a very hard choice, but the price, we think the price is worth it. When I called out Kant's U.S. government-sponsored regime change vacation on Twitter, she doubled down on her slander, demanding to know if I'd also line my pockets with Bashar Bucks. She tends to do that, though, often. She won't answer the question. Full disclosure, I have never received money from Bashar al-Assad, the Syrian government, or any of its functionaries. And I don't know how getting Syrian government money would even be possible, given the U.S. sanctions that make such an act a criminal offense. But I did receive the same award that Jimmy Dore and many other anti-war journalists have received from the nonprofit group she referenced, and which, once again, is not part of the Syrian government in any way. And guess what? I'm proud to have earned an award approved by the family of Serena Shim, the brave American journalist who lost her life exposing the dirty war in Syria. She always has a tendency to do this, by the way. When you call out her, when you criticize her, she'll try to say that you're like a foreign asset. She's done that to a couple of people. She's done that to a couple of people. So she has cringe policies, cringe takes on foreign policy. And that's not all. That's not all. Let's go into this clip here. Is this the one I wanted to show? Yes. We need to talk about what happened to this pack that Nomiki had and where that money went. Let's get into this. This is troubling if I've ever seen Nomiki Konst patriarch pack raising money despite FEC shutdown. Now I told you that she ran for office before. This is not the first time. Now this goes back to 2019. So here we go. Matriarch, a pack dedicated to helping progressive working women candidates run for elected office is the project of a failed public advocate candidate, Nomiki Kunst, who announced the venture in a tweet on October 25th. She goes on to say some quotes there. Less than a month later, however, the FEC delivered some bad news, telling her in a letter that they would be administratively terminating her committee, 
which an FEC spokesperson told the Post was due to the PAC's failure to file required disclosure reports. And here comes the problem. The shutdown hasn't stopped Nomiki from moving full steam ahead to promote the PAC and raise money. The PAC's website gives no indication of the administrative shutdown and eagerly accepted a $5 donation from the Post. So what the New York Post did, they tested that site to see if, if they were still accepting donations, basically. So they donated $5 just to see if she was still taking money to make sure it wasn't just a rumor. It wasn't just a rumor. She was still taking money from the PAC, even though the FEC shut it down. So where did all that money go? Not just that $5, obviously. She was still collecting money. Listen to this. Just days before the PAC, oh, I hate this thing. Just days before the PAC was terminated, Nomiki sat for a cushy interview with left-leaning Intercept site and boasted of having 1,500 nominations for 2020 congressional races. She says her expectation is to make the PAC's first endorsement in January. The fundraising, oh, I wish this would stop moving. Sorry. This website is, uh, let me go back where I was. The fundraising means Nomiki will be forced to file a disclosure report in January 2020 and formally reconstitute her PAC. If she fails to do so, the FEC could initiate fines or an audit of matriarch. Now, a consultant here responded in reference to this. This is not something I would ever want to happen with any PAC that I work with. That's coming from Jerry Ann Henry, who was a GOP consultant who had worked around campaigns and PACs for 15 years. Henry said nobody would be going to jail over the issue, but said the appearances were bad. You should check the legalities first and then ask for money, not the other way around. If I worked for her, I would be asking her every day where stuff is. Though Nomiki announced the pack in October, records show the group was actually launched quietly in June 2018. And from there was beset by multiple notices from the FEC citing them to failure to file their required forms. So again, here we go. She received multiple notices from the FEC citing them for failure to file their required forms. Their most recent financial report was filed in January 2019, showing zero money spent or raised. A July 2019 report was missed altogether. Here's the other problem. It's not the first time Nomiki has faced ethics questions. Her 2019 race for public advocate was married, oh, excuse me, for public advocate was marred by allegations of fraud from a campaign aide who accused her of funneling more than $100,000 in public matching funds to a consulting firm which ties to an ex-boyfriend. In a statement, matriarch board member Rania Beatrice pinned the blame on the PAC's former attorney and said sub subsequent forms would be filed on time. We have changed lawyers, have worked closely with and amended all with the FEC to update our current status and will be filing accordingly to reflect the beginning of fundraising since our very recent launch. But what happened to the money? What? Where's all this, where'd the money go? If you were shut down, why, if she was shut down, why was she still taking donations? This is a problem. This is a problem. Eric T. Red said it must be Saul Goodman's fault. <laughs> That's a better call Saul uh, thing there, you guys, if you haven't seen that show or not. But where'd all this... Where'd this money go? I told you, this ain't the first time she ran for office. So, 
So this is problematic. There's more. This is who Nomiki is. This is why I said she's another one. She really plays for the Democratic Party. Now, here's an example here. Again, this is her tweet. I hope all the leaders of this next generation look at vice president as a role model for public service. He is one great statesman. And it's not just him. There are pictures of her. We showed this on RBN, pictures of her too, where she says she's friends with Lindsey Graham and it's her and Lindsey Graham. So this she is, I told you guys, she's another one that will just keep you in the Democratic Party. This is, is this is suspect. This is suspect. You can't praise Joe Biden and then say those kinds of things. So to make a long story short in reference to this race in particular, she pretty much is a spoiler candidate. And I'm sorry. Whether you like Nomiki or not, when you're choosing to run for office, that's your responsibility to see who else is. You should be able to see that when you go and run. You already know who the candidates are. What do you do? What's the rest of, by the way, for the progressive media that's still, you know, telling people to put progressives through the Democratic Party, what are they going to do? Who are they going to tell you to support? the DSA supported candidate or their friend. You see what I'm saying? Because David Dole is already on Twitter telling people he's proud of his friend. She's been on there a couple of times. So is David Dole going to tell you to vote for Nomiki because that's his friend? Or he's going to tell you to vote for the other progressive who actually was in the race before her and is backed by AOC and is backed by the DSA. What do you do? This was just stupid. This was dumb. I'm sorry. So anyway, long story short, this is bad. This is just bad. That will split the progressive vote. Now, what could she do to fix this? If I was her, knowing this information, especially the backlash you're getting from people right now saying you're going to split the vote, if I was her, the respectable thing to do would be to drop out of it and let the candidate who was already in that progressive, let them get the progressive vote, not split the vote. What if they split the vote and neither one of them get in? <sighs> Indy left news says this is embarrassing. It is embarrassing. Like, could, do you guys think, the right you think if they had these kind of candidates on the right you think they would have messed this up 